In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Visual Studio Code ROS extension with containers. We're going to cover prerequisites for Visual Studio Code, setting up a dev container, connecting to it, using the ROS extension in that container, and then connecting to a remote computer's dev container. Before we begin, please have Docker and Docker Compose installed. If you're on Windows, you can install Docker for Windows. On Linux, app get inst or app install Docker and Docker Compose. And then in Visual Studio Code, install the remote extension pack. So the way this works is Visual Studio Code is actually split up into two pieces. There's the UI and then there's a remote server. When you're using SSH, the remote and server is installed over SSH. However, when you're using a container on a local computer, it uses shared memory. Visual Studio Code's remote extension will connect to Docker and leveraging some features of the dev container will in start building up your, your hosting environment. We're going to be starting with a ROS host, and I'll show how to set this up. Inside of that ROS container, Visual Studio Code will install the, the server side of Visual Studio Code. We'll then set up the dev container so it injects the ROS extension and then mount your workspace folder into this container so that it can be used with ROS. There are several files that need to be set up in order to make this work. The first is a Docker file. Now, this is a description of your workspace environment. Uh, it includes a from, in this case, the official Open Robotics release of ROS Foxy, on top of which we can install other dependencies, such as GDB, which would be needed to debug a C++ ROS node inside of the container. We also set up the entry point. This uh, ROS entry point shell script is actually part of the ROS Foxy image that we're overlaying on top of. The next file we need is a Docker Compose YAML. This leverages the previous file, the Docker image, the Docker file to create the image, but also configures that image on how to run it. Some important data here, we wanna make sure it's a privileged container because we need to be able to access resources outside of the container. We want the network mode to be host so that the container can actually talk outside to things like RViz or to ROS nodes running outside of that container. We also want to mount some volumes into it, including not just our workspace, but to make sure that the time is synchronized between the host and the, and the container. And then there's some other data in here that's appropriate for the Docker Compose. Now these are Docker features for creating the image and starting the image. The next file is actually about Visual Studio Code. This is a file that you put into your workspace directory that says, hey, Visual Studio Code, this is a special thing. When you detect it, please open up Visual Studio Code in and set this container up so that I have my local files from my computer projected into this container and work inside of that container. As part of that, we're also going to force install the, Emma, the Visual Studio Code ROS extension into that container so that we can use it as a ROS environment. So let's see how this works. So now we're going to switch back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to select the Extensions tab and search for Remote Pack. You'll find the Remote Development Pack includes three items, so I'm going to click Install. Now don't select this quite yet because we're actually going to open the local workspace directory that includes the dev container. So I'm going to go to file and in my case open recent and I'm opening a local folder that contains my dev container as well as my workspace that's checked out. Yeah, now you'll notice that Visual Studio Code will offer to open this folder in the container. So I'm going to hold off on that for a second, but if this is something that you want to do, go ahead and press the open in container. So in my workspace, here's that 
dev container, the Docker compose, Docker file, which includes not just the GDB, but some other things that were needed to set this particular workspace up. And I have a repos file, which is a uh, standard for ROS for representing a workspace that is composed of multiple repositories. Since I lost that dialog, I can actually go and press control shift P and rebuild and, and reopen in container. So what this does is it actually is going to start the dev container, start building it in the background using Docker, instantiate that build or that Docker container and connect Visual Studio to it. Okay. Now, with the Visual Studio Code ROS extension, it might not detect that this is a, a, um, a uh, ROS folder. So if not, if you don't see the, the correct folder started, what you can do is you can go to Control Shift P, open Workspace Settings and look for Distro, and then actually type the distro you want. So in this case, Foxy. And that will force the Visual Studio Code ROS extension to open the correct environment for building. Now at this point, I'm actually running on Windows connected to a Linux container running in WSL, running in its own uh, Linux environment that's built from official ROS images. So if you press Control Shift B, for example, it'll detect that this is a Qualcomm workspace. And when you build it, you're actually building in the WSL container a workspace on the Linux side. Now, if you wanted to use simulation or something like that, you can actually install the simulation environment in WSL or Windows Native and connect to that container running in WSL. So you can see it's still building here. Once it's complete, you can go ahead and set up your run and launch files uh, and run and debug as you need it. So if you watch the SSH video, you'll know that you can connect Visual Studio Code to a remote uh, computer and open a workspace there. But dev containers are also supported remotely. So for example, if you have a JetBot that is running Ubuntu 18.04, but you want to use Foxy, which requires Ubuntu 20.04, you can actually use a, a ROS2 container hosted on the Jetson Nano, connect to it for over SSH, open the dev container there, and debug and uh, uh, normally on that remote system. So let's show you how that works. Now I've previously set up SSH keys uh, and configured the JetBot so that I can receive uh, SSH tunnels. I'm going to select the remote window at the bottom here, connect this current window to host, and select my JetBot. Now it is connected to or connecting to this remote computer. Now I'm going to open the workspace that contains the dev container. So file open folder select my workspace, select JetBot, click OK. Now once it detects that there's a dev container here, it's going to ask me if I want to reopen it. Select Reopen. And now it's actually opening the dev container running in Docker on the JetBot over SSH. And there you go, ROS2 Foxy running in a container remotely over SSH with all of the benefits of the Visual Studio Code extension, including ROS file launching. Hope you find this useful. Thanks.